Hello, we're going to talk about the Great Depression, even though the Great Depression occurred uh, almost 100 years ago. It is still a period of time that we should uh, look at carefully because it is uh, probably uh, an, a, an economic period of time that we can learn a lot from. As you know, the Great Depression happened during the 1930s. And uh, the real GDP significantly decreased uh, during, especially during the f during 1932, 33, 34. There were a couple of years where it actually increased back again, and then in the late 1930s we had another couple of years where real GDP declined. Many people think that the Great Depression was caused by the stock market crash of. Uh, that happened in October of uh, 1929. So October 1929, the stock market uh, significantly uh, crashed. Many, many stocks lost their value, sometimes uh, more than 50, 60 percent of their value. And people that thought they were uh, financially in pretty good shape, because a lot of people use this uh, for their pension. Uh, all of a sudden uh, we're not in such good shape anymore. Well, the stock market certainly didn't help, but I don't think it caused the Great Depression. Uh, we have to look at um, other stock market crashes that did not lead to Great Depressions. And so we, uh, we can conclude that it might not have been the crash that caused the Great Depression, but uh, other factors associated with it. For example, we noticed that uh, during the 1920s, a lot of people borrowed money to buy stocks. And of course, they borrowed money to buy stocks because stock prices during the 1920s, from pretty much 1921 on through, 19, through October 1929, uh, stocks, uh, stock prices increased. So people wanted to buy stocks and wanted to take advantage of the increases in the prices of stocks to try to get profits. Now, in my opinion, the idea that so many people borrowed so much money to buy stocks, and then after the stock market crashed, so many people, of course, lost stock value, but also couldn't pay back their loans, which then affected banks, and many banks then went bankrupt, which then affected people who had savings in banks, even people that never invested in the stock market, they had savings in banks, and if those banks went bankrupt, they lost all their savings. At the time, there was no insurance, or there was not a whole lot of uh, insurance, certainly no FDIC, not, not a federal deposit insurance. There was some private insurance. So many people who had savings in banks uh, lost all their savings. And so all that borrowing during the 1920s by people that wanted to buy stocks was leading to a chain effect of uh, just uh, terrible financial things in the 1930s. So to look at an example of somebody borrowing money to buy stocks, let's say that somebody is borrowing, or let's say somebody's buying $5,000 worth of stocks in, let's say, just pick a year, 1926. And at the time, people were allowed to borrow 90% of uh, the amount, the value of the stocks that they bought. So let's say that they borrowed $4,500, which is 90% of 5000 And so they only had to come up with $500 of their own money. Now things would go well if, let's say, in 19... 27, the value of their stock had increased to $6,000. That's a $1,000 increase, and maybe 7000 in 1928. So there's no problem there. People would just keep making money, and they might even pay some of that money back, or they would keep their loan. But in 1929, stocks crashed. And let's say that um, the stocks crashed to 
an amount of $3,000 in 1929 after the crash. So now all of a sudden, we've got a $4,500 loan. Stocks are only worth $3,000. People can pay back some of their loan, but not all of it. And this would lead to these bankruptcies that we noticed in 1930, 1931, and so forth. So these bankruptcies, of course, affected the entire financial world. And because so many people lost their savings as well, they were not able to buy as many goods and services and cars and houses. And of course, then the, uh, the goods world, or what some people now call Main Street, was affected as well, which of course reduced GDP significantly. And that led to the high unemployment rates during the 1930s. Unemployment was as high as 25% during its worst time. It's interesting to note that this uh, sequence of events during the 1920s happened also before the recent crash of 2009, 2008-2009. But instead of uh, the crash happening with stocks in the, the 2000s, the crash happened in the housing market. It was the same idea. People were borrowing a lot of money to buy houses because housing prices were going up so much. And uh, so because of all the borrowing, when, this, when the housing market crashed, many people couldn't pay back their loans and they foreclosed. And that, of course, affected many banks. Lots of banks went bankrupt. And so, the, so history really repeated itself from the 1920s to the 2000s. And then the stock market crash in 1929 and the housing market crash in 2008-2009. And I want to reiterate that it wasn't necessarily the crash that caused the economic problems, the severe economic problems afterward, but it was really the borrowing, the excessive borrowing that took place before those crashes. Because if people hadn't really borrowed money for stocks or for houses in, in the 2000s, then there would not have been this chain effect of uh, negative economic things going on. Certainly the economy would have been negatively affected, but because the chain effect would not have taken place, it would not have led to a, in the 1930s, Great Depression, or in after 2008 and 2009, what they called the Great Recession. So just a couple of notes about all of this too is um, some people thought that the stock market in the 1920s was a uh, bubble market in other words stock prices increased more than they should have there's some argument about that because some uh, there's a distinction between a, a bubble and a bull market george reisman whom i quote in our textbook thought that it was just a bull market during the 1920s in other words Stock prices rose, but they were actually supposed to rise based on the inventions and the technology advances and the increases in profits by businesses. So stock prices were justified to increase. Reisman also thought that really stock prices should not have crashed in 1929. However, some people probably started some rumors that they thought mm, maybe stock prices are very high, maybe overly high and that they were going to be due for a correction. So that's what led to, you know, these rumors led to these, the sell-off of many of the stocks. But again, the, the main reason for the Great Depression uh, was not necessarily the stock market crash, but all the borrowing that took place. Stock prices actually recovered within several years after the crash. So if there hadn't been all that borrowing, people had just held on to the people that just regularly owned the stocks with their own money had held on to all these stocks, would have seen those stock prices recover and things would have been okay, at least not as bad. In addition to the excessive borrowing, the other thing that really increased the severity of the, of the uh, depression, the Great Depression, were uh, some government actions. First of all, by the Fed. The Fed decided to uh, raise interest rates and uh, they really made the economic situation. Uh, they also did a few other things, but uh, in general, uh, the Fed really didn't um, 
act um, responsibly at the time. Of course, that maybe at the time they didn't know any better. Uh, the Fed has a little bit more knowledge now, uh, but the Fed didn't make it, um, uh, didn't um, help the situation and uh, probably made the Great Depression worse than it otherwise would have been. Congress also um, didn't uh, help very much. Uh, they actually raised taxes. Some of the people in, within Congress wanted to keep a balanced budget, which is understandable. It's a nice, noble goal. But uh, at that time, it led to increases in taxes. And of course, uh, that uh, also didn't help the, the main economy. In addition, they raised uh, tariffs and quotas, uh, what we call, uh, they, uh, they, um, it led to protectionism. And uh, of course, other countries started to do the same thing. And all that would do is uh, lead to higher prices, less competition, less productivity, and so forth. So that uh, the actions by the Fed and Congress uh, really exacerbated things as well and led to an even further contraction in real GDP.